Alex for such a uh, full and, and generous opening and more importantly for inviting me to um, this event and also covering a couple of things so I'm really on time now Toby so thank you. Um, as um, Alex mentioned um, as well as my role at the university which is the main reason I'm here um, I'm also a social scientist and I gained my PhD under the supervision of Kathy Marsh who founded what is now called the Kathy Marsh Institute um, at the university. So I'm particularly proud and delighted to welcome you to what is now day two. On the calendar it says day one, because yesterday was day zero. But anyway, I know a number of you had a really good time out last night, and I hope that really um, set you up for today and also gave you a bit of a taster of many of the joys that this great city can offer you as you spill out at the end of the day and enjoy, particularly the Northern Quarter. I think this is a really good space to, um, to spend your leisure time. So this event is organised by Cathy Marsh Institute in collaboration with our Data Science Institute and our Software Sustainability Institute and the Carpentry. So it's really great to see this community coming together. It's not just my personal history of the Cathy Marsh Institute which makes me pleased to be here. It's also much more importantly because of the work that you are all doing um, this is immensely important to all research and the contribution that our research makes to society more generally. Your focus on promoting and doing reproducible and reusable science, developing software skills, training researchers, all career ages. It's not just our young ones who need to, to move into this. There's a number of us around who cut our teeth using data skills that you probably would not recognise except in a textbook these days. So one of the biggest challenges I have in the university is encouraging those who can optimise with the skills that they know um, to really find the time and headspace to learn something new to help uplift, transform, or just help them do their research neater and quicker. Um, so that's one of the things which initiatives like this really, really help us with. You're also sharing and spreading good teaching practices, and again, we really need to crank up in this space. I've talked mainly about Manchester, but I don't think we're behind, particularly in the curve in higher education institutes, in terms of preparing our undergraduates in whatever area of life they go into to understand the data and the software they're working with, to either help produce it or at least to be able to critique and challenge stuff that may look a bit flaky. And the other two things I think you do which are really important and are emphasised in the materials I see is the value of collaborative work and sharing and open source of your code and your data, your working practices, your know-how, your tips and tricks. We know from all kinds of research on organisations, it's that people bit, that collaboration, that trust and willingness to share that drives much more innovation than just brutal competition. So I'm really, really pleased to see this emphasised along with building your communities across the world and your emphasis on increasing the diversity of the communities who do it. And it's nice to see a better mix um, in terms of visual presentation than I see in, in many audiences. So these are all vital for continued vitality of our research and the integrity of our research particularly when we're in a world at the moment where the views of the expert or fake news pepper everything and challenge all of us in, in what we do and how we interrogate, evaluate, persuade people that it's no longer flat earth, that there is a climate emergency, etc. So, from the perspective of Manchester, you're helping us to build our capabilities as we embrace the principles of open research and open science. And within the university, we've got 10,000 staff, uh, 40,000 students. Some groups are already way, way ahead and leading, and I would count this community in it. Others we need to bring along and share into this space. Our commitment to principles of open research and open science at the university are fledgling at a university level, um, but they're going to gain further momentum in the next stage of our research strategy. Uh, so like many organisations in the UK, we've been refreshing our strategies. We'll be launching uh, early in 2020, 2020 sorry. Um, and one of the key platforms within that is an explicit institutional commitment to progressing and accelerating our work in the open research and open science space. So I'm working with a group, um, there's loads of committees in all your organisations, called the Open Research Working Group, that connects to those of you who remember research lifecycle project groups. 
Um, and we'll be launching an open research expert group very, very shortly with an invitation to join. So we've got a community we can draw and build on the skills you have, get them shared out, um, and we can pulse test uh, ideas in the university to whether they make sense to you as a community. Um, I'll uh, arrange for details to be circulated to you in due course. Actually, I just put them up now. That's the uh, link for our open research commitment. The second reason why work is so important is that what you're doing is going to help us progress so much of the data science that we do. Um, and in particular, I'd just like to do a plug for Digital Futures, which is a platform at the university that brings together over 850 researchers driving interdisciplinary research using all kinds of data in a digital world and focused on understanding and learning what a digital world means for us, but sharing skills both among researchers, among different disciplinary specialisms, and with our student and professional service community. Again, you can find more if you want to click through there. And the third and final reason why your work is so important to me, I think, is your ethos and your inclusive approach. This chimes really, really squarely with our university's commitment to advancing the quality, diversity and inclusion for all our staff and students and to our broader social responsibility commitment in what we do, how we do it, whether it's through procurement, through to the very high standards I want us to continue to deliver in terms of how we do our research, what we do with our research, what do we do with our research findings when we have them. And this brings me full circle, though Alex has already very nicely talked about my research. My personal research career has been focused all the way through on a commitment to researching particularly gender inequalities. There are similarities and differences between different categories and intersectionality, and that's for another time. Uh, but gender inequalities, particularly in relation to job quality, working conditions, what all our jobs are going to look like under industry four, et cetera, et cetera. And I've done this largely without many of the skills that you're all developing, um, but hey ho, that's me at the, uh, the sunset of my uh, academic career. Um, but more importantly, I think the work that I've built, I've helped to apply findings and take them out into policy communities. And I hope that whatever you're working on, you will do that to help us keep the world on course, to challenge fake news, and to help make it a better place, however we define what better means. So, if you want to find out any more about the stuff I do, I've also added a link, because Alex said some of you would be interested. So, thank you very much for listening to me. Have a great day. I'm really sorry I can't be with you for the day, because I have to go back to university to do another presentation around strategy again. But hey, <laughs> thanks very much. Thank you.